G'day guys, Smith City here for Smith City Product Review as well. Did a beer here last night with this mountain culture, New England IPA, called Quantum Leap. Had one can left. Decided I'd do it as a old style review. Don't know what happened now, I just forgot how to speak. There's <laughs> like a long pause in between three words. Um... And a bit of a life chip chat. So it's 6%. Love the can art. Um, obviously, I've already tried it. So I'll just sort of explain it a little bit. It's sort of very uh, citrusy, um, like lemony, but more of like the flesh of a lemon than sort of the rind. Um, it's not necessarily bitter on that part. Um, does have sort of like a, a bit of a blackberry, um, raspberry and strawberry type um, berry notes to it that sort of, it's it's almost, it's got like a rosé quality to it. So anyway, as you can see there, it's got a bit of foamy head, it's got a heart, it's got a sort of, um, thin to medium mouthfeel. But um, I'll just read off the, it's limited release. It's uh, in a three fifty-five mil can, 1.7 standard drinks. It's made in Australia, in uh, New South Wales. And um, this beer showcases our growth from a dilapidated heritage building in the Blue Mountains, New South Wales to, uh, Blue, excuse me, Blue Mountains, New South Wales to, to shelves all over Australia in a few short years. <laughs> I really stuffed that up, didn't I? Um, a quantum leap powered by tons of hard work, a hot forward New England IPA featuring mosaic galaxy citra and a touch of cent centennial hops for a bouquet of berries, tropical fruit, and citrus notes. So a bit of um, a bit of a life update at the moment. Um, I'm sort of at the crossroads of life. Um, you know, feel free to comment if you've found yourself in this position many, many times. But um, obviously, I got rid of my plumbing job to try to go full bore into my PT business, um, and door dashing. Um, obviously I've got a sort of a morning and afternoon gig, um, one hour, one hour, and I'm working that in with door dashing and, and my PT business. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to pick up any more PT clients in this time and, um, not through trying. And it's been a very big struggle for three years. Um, I was flying before the pandemic with nine clients and then the pandemic hit and it's just been a really tough road ever since and this isn't to start a political thing or like, you know, the government let me down or any of that because I don't, I don't agree with that. I tried to position my business in a more online space. That took a lot of time and effort, a lot of 14, 15, 16 hour days um, working sort of in the north and on and the west when I worked in the east. Sorry, when I lived in the east and then I'd come home and and like at six, seven o'clock at night and try to put in effort to create online services. And so it's been quite tough and, you know, with little to no exposure, um, you know, businesses tend tend to struggle and you're at a point where you're like, okay, do I Obviously, it's my passion. I love doing it. And like every time I wake up and I'm training people, you know, it's something that I love doing. And, um, but how long do you sort of stare at a brick wall and smash your head into it over and over again? And, and like, I'd love to have a large bank balance that allows you to go, okay, well, I'm going to just not do anything and just put full year into it and everything's good. But obviously, I don't come from a 
line of wealth. So you sit here and go, okay, well, my car's just done its clutch. Uh, that could send me back between a thousand and fifteen hundred. Um, doing that, do I go back to DoorDash and just keep smashing the Ks on my car uh, for the next thing to go wrong on it? Uh, that's not a defeatist attitude. That's just a you know a reality of having a, a you know relatively old used car is that you get to a certain point and then things start to go and it can be a sort of a a chain reaction and I saw that with my parents with cars growing up and all of a sudden you know one thing goes wrong on it and then they repair that and then they get sort of back to where they would like to which might take a while then bang the next thing happens and it just sort of goes goes from there so bit of a ramble I know but I need to sort of decompress from what's going on because you know if you if you don't get it out it sort of just sits there and um really starts to eat at you a bit so you know I'm sitting here going not necessarily to quit my business because I don't want to do that but I might have to go back to getting a full-time job Monday to Friday and just going back to train people on the weekends and know that that is going to have me at a net loss with gym rent and not having a big client base that actually puts me in the green each week, but using a full-time job to take some money um, to allow that money that's coming out of my business um, to come out, out of a normal pay week. Um, but but live because at the moment I'm at a stage where a couple wrong couple wrong situations in the next couple of months could could uh like I don't even want to think about it I, re- I really 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 don't want to think about it and so I've got some jobs that I will potentially apply for uh I'm just waiting for a, a mate who's my mechanic to get back to me in terms of what he thinks um he would charge to fix the clutch and I just got to make some tough decisions I've got to make some really really tough decisions and um, it's hard It, it really is hard I put my blood sweat and tears into my PT business and um you know, I've, I've helped a lot of people in relearning how to enjoy exercise again and not take the gym as like a, a serious, strict, like obsessive situation. Um, I've helped a lot of people with mental health issues. Um, and referred out where I've, where I've had to. But, um... Yeah, it's getting to the point where, like, if I just go, oh, and, like, just be all head-in-the-sand type attitude is that not only will I probably not have my business, I will probably be in extreme financial trouble. So, um, yeah, it's it's tough. It really is tough. So, I just got to do what's right for me. Nothing's set in stone. Nothing ever is. So, there could be an element where I do go down that direction of a full-time job and all of a sudden I might have everyone come out the woodwork wanting to train. Um, which, you know, if it is, I can work, I can work around a job, that's no problem especially if, you, if I find a job that starts early in the morning and you've got sort of the um, early afternoon to sort of about five or six or seven where you can put people into PT slots. So, yeah, I just got to... It's, it's tough. It's tough. Like, if anyone out there that's... If anyone out there that's been running a business... It's a soul-destroying um, situation at times. Um, I had a fair amount of savings behind me when I quit my removalist job and I went from 
that to going, okay, well, I'm going to take a labouring job because it wasn't going to be forever. I'll get qualified. Um, I'll have to hit a pocket of clientele between this date of getting qualified and this date. And I should have enough to play with to be able to make it all work. And obviously I was bang on the money with all of that because literally I started to tick over in the green for a month with my labouring job and my PT business for like a month. So like I, I hit that sweet spot pretty perfectly in terms of, okay, once that month had have continued and the pandemic didn't hit, I would have been able to keep rolling in and probably, you know, 12, 13, 15, 16, 18, 20 clients. And then all of a sudden, you know, word of mouth starts to get around that like, you know, Michael's really good at what he does with training and helps people with understanding how their body moves and like base, basic movement patterns and, um, you know, how um, behaviour works around habits and fears and, and, and all those sorts of things with my youth work background and qualifications that I have um, of working with people. Um, and all of a sudden that, all, all of a sudden that turns into, you know, a, a, a business that's probably pushing upwards of 15 hundred to eighteen hundred a week um had the pandemic not hit but it, it obviously did and so you can't you can't cry over spilt milk which is exactly what I didn't do when it happened I'm saying okay I gotta look at a different avenue I've got to make this work. The only problem is is without my business being known like you only really you train in an area and within that area you train people that you know and it's very hard to sort of build from that so yeah I just gotta I just gotta find out what works for me and um I think I need to renew my business midway through next year I gotta <laughs> I've got to pay um, car rego on a car that I'm not using at the moment in three days' time, so that, that'll be fun. And i just got to find a way through this mess and out the other side. Like, this is probably outside of my abuse, which obviously, you know, if people don't know, um, you know, I was sexually abused growing up for seven years. And um, where I am right now with my life and my finances and things, this is probably equally as, as tough in, for different reasons. Um, in both scenarios, you feel like you're drowning and you feel like there's no way out and there's, there's no way of getting through it. But, you know, I just got to find a way through it. And that's up, that's up to me to get through it. And I know it's a bit of a ramble, but I'll keep keep talking because I I got I got to get all this stuff out. Like I I have to. It's 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 therapeutic for me to do so. Um, and let's just say further down the track, if things don't work out with with my business completely, and I do have to give it up completely. You know that isn't necessarily a failure. Um, it, it, it definitely isn't, um, because I, I think of all the things that I've done within my business in terms of, you know, help, helping Ben, my first ever client, lose 50 kilos, but the, the number is irrelevant. I've treated him and valued him the same of when he was 130 odd kilos to where he is now. Um, but it was about seeing him improve his coping mechanisms as to why he was binge eating and um, doing the certain behaviours that he's doing based on certain things that were happening in his um, current life and also, um, you know, through his childhood and all the rest of it. And so, you know, you look at that and go, even just that in itself, even though my business hasn't done what I've wanted it to do, is my business has been a success just from that. And then you look at the, the bigger scale of things of, 
training people for free in uh, in the pandemic. We're doing on, online sessions and, and maybe being a circuit breaker for people's mental health and getting them to the other side of that, other side of the, the pandemic. Um, you know, the car giveaway, where had I not done that, uh, I would have been in all sorts. Obviously, it took a long while to, to, to get it to happen and it went to the right person in, in the Lismore floods. But, um, you know, had I not gone down that path of asking for help, I I I definitely would have uh, gone bank bankrupt with the with the car loan that I had, so I had I had to reach out for help and then pay it pay it forward and that's just what I, that's just what I did and um, I never did it to propel my business I never did it to for any notoriety or whatever it was just okay, people have helped me out. You know, I some other people may have just asked for that the help got the help and decided to then sell the car and pocket 15 grand, and um, that's just not who I am. And, um, you know, obviously I said what I was going to do with it, and hence that's what I did. And so, yeah, all these little things that have gone on in my business, you're just like, okay, well, if I have to close the doors on it at some point, it definitely, it definitely hasn't been a fail. It definitely hasn't been. And it's, yeah, it's, it's tough. It, it really is tough. Anyway, I've gone a bit off topic with the beer. Probably as I rated it, I think I rated drinkability as a nine and rating a nine, I'll probably stick with that rating. But it is quite nice. Sort of, yeah, it's it's sort of like a little bit like a rosé just with a bit of like hoppy IPA bitterness, which is quite nice. So, yeah, if, one, if anyone else is, is, is struggling to some degree, um, you know, I'm always happy to chat in my comment section and that sort of stuff. Um, Yeah. Anyway. Catch ya.